Why voices on there? Okay. <laughs> so um, most of you already know um, we've had Rich before at the center. He's a self-taught spirit medium and medical intuitive. He was not born with the gifts. This is something that he developed, and, and he'll tell you his story. Rich, as well as Joanne, have, to me, been my gifts for my son. Um, they have both taught me so much. Not just It's not just about the signs or the um, messages, or it is actually all about the messages, but it's just not the validations. It is the messages that I've gotten through Rich. And not just that he's okay, but about my life's purpose and, and why he passed and you know where I'm going with this. I really feel that Rich and Joanne and, and Michelle, Rich's wife, have really helped me to grow my spirit and it has brought me so much peace in my journey and I'm just so thrilled that he supports our mission and feels that it is important for us to know that our children are okay and that we can still grow and have meaning in our lives even after this tragedy. And so he's always here and willing to share his knowledge with us. So I just want to welcome him and thank him from the bottom of my heart for doing this for us. And I want to be rich when I grow up, too. <laughs> yeah, but you want to be like rich, rich, like money-wise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, comfy. This is really odd, the fact that it's being recorded, so i got to say it out loud, <laughs> even though it's being recorded. So I want to thank everyone for, uh, for coming here. Um, it's always an honor for me. Um, what I'm about to share with you today is going to be about my own personal experiences. So it doesn't represent what Jen or Christine or uh, Joanne feels. It represents what I feel, what I know, what I understand. Some of them might be the same as their knowledge or how they feel about life and it might be different. What I'm going to ask everybody today to do is to please be open to the things that I share with them. Sometimes it's a lot different than what, um, I know it's a lot different than what I've learned. And so it might be different than what you've learned or what you grew. What's most important is that you listen to yourself inside and see if it makes sense to you. I found that anytime something makes sense to me, my spirit was actually sensing the truth in what somebody was saying or what I was reading. So I would go and not take everything as being truthful, but there was at least a portion of it that resonated some truth inside of me, which is why I was sensing that. I'm also going to ask you to be truthful. So if you have a question, please don't feel like you're imposing or please don't feel um, that you would be threatening something that I say. I welcome it and I'm going to ask you to do it. Of all the classes and the events that I, that I give, I always tell people that what's most important is that if I really do have a good connection, if I really am connected to higher sources of wisdom, and if I really can communicate with people that no longer have bodies, then let it prove itself. So what better way of proving itself is that if I can go and share information with you and you can say, you can debate me on it, if you feel like debating or you just want to ask a question about it, it's a great way of hearing my response. And if it makes sense to you, it might uh, enlighten your understanding a little bit more or see something that you normally you didn't see the way you've learned so far in your life. So it's important, again, to, to always feel that you can have the ability of questioning what somebody's speaking about, and then listening to the answers. I'm going to be off on some things. I always tell people I'm a work in progress. So I've been doing readings for people for about three years, which is really not a lot of time compared to what other mediums and people that communicate with angels and you know medical intuitives do, psychics do. But in that particular in that particular time, I didn't want to do any of this. I I didn't even know if I believed in ghosts or spirits or um, you know, I was raised, you know, I was raised uh, Catholic and I was raised where I went to church all the time. But when, let me just give a second, when my life was starting to change itself, when it was starting to evolve, a new understanding comes into your life. And when that new understanding comes into your life, I found that it was crucial um, to have faith in what I was now experiencing. So I'm going to go back to the start on what all happened and it's going to lead up. And you guys stop me at any time that you want and just you know, ask questions if you feel the need to ask a question. So, you know, when I was raised, I was raised in a Catholic family. And 
in that Catholic family we went to church all the time and I went to special religious classes where I learned about the Bible and I learned about God and Jesus and all the different sacraments. So I grew up that way in my life. And as my life went on and on and on, I ended up getting different jobs and I ended up settling where I became um, an undercover police detective. So I was a narcotic detective for over 25 years. But I also had my own martial arts school. And I taught martial arts. Uh, and I went on that way for many, many years, got married, had a child. And I realized that there was a point in my life that came where I was just unhappy. You know, having everything that I was raised to believe. You have a nice house, you have a nice family, you have a good secure job, you're making good money. You're also, this, um, you're also doing, you know, the martial arts, which is... You know, you're giving back to the kids and you're teaching people, you know, a better way of life and having more confidence in themselves. And yet I was still unhappy. And I didn't understand why. So in my own way of being honest with me and um, focusing on where the happiness was and where the love was in my life, I separated. And I went my own direction. So I gave up everything that I had. I put myself in great debt and... Uh, ended up getting divorced and moved into this small apartment and above me um, lived a family, great people. Um, but at the time, I wasn't quite sure because I just moved in. The girl that was up there, um, she, was, uh, she was in a raid that I did a week before, a narcotic raid, and I ended up arresting her. So now I'm moving into this place where I just arrested this girl I'm in debt. I don't have a marriage anymore. My daughter is, you know, living with her mom, and it doesn't get any worse than that. It just, it's crazy. I quit the martial arts. I quit the martial arts club. I stopped teaching uh, karate. I left it to my students, and I just kept my job, um, you know, being uh, the undercover cop. So in my own quest to make things different, most of the people inside of my life were just like, okay, he cracked up, he left, all right. You know, we're going to support him. So then I started turning to myself, and I said, you know, there's got to be a better way of life. I keep on making what I feel like is the wrong decisions, meaning that my life keeps on going downhill. It doesn't get better. Where is the increase in happiness? Where is the increase in love? Where is the increase in my life? And so in that quest, um, I said, okay, I grew up believing there was a God. I never saw any proof of God in my life. I never saw God come down and go, Rich, I'm going to help you out with this, or I'm going to receive guidance in my sleep, or the angels never showed up, or not as much as, you know, everybody wants that in their life, you know, to have the help. But it didn't happen for me. It might have happened for other people, but not me. So now, not seeing the proof of it inside of my life, I kind of doubted God a little bit. I kind of doubted that way of life and what I was taught and bringing up. I didn't know if ghosts exist or spirits existed because I never saw any proof. So in my quest of saying, if there really was a God, the way I brought up to believe, I was going to do my part to surrender myself to it. What if it was just up to me? What if I did it all wrong? What if I created the life that I was creating for myself, just because I was spiritually unlearned? So I went on that path. So what I first did was I realized that there was times in my life where I would think and think and think and never come up with the answer. And there were other times in my life where I just knew things information came to me and I didn't have to think about it. And I found out in those moments where things came to me, information came to me, that it wasn't mine. It was something that was being shared with me. I also found that in those moments, most of the time, my mind would say, oh, that's not true, we can't do that, we're going to go do something else. And I realized there was two voices. I realized that my mind had one voice and had me thinking all the time and trying to come up with the answer, no matter how many times I tried to come up with the answer, I was never absolutely sure that was the right answer to do, or that was the right direction to make my life, or that was the right choice. It was always based on a belief system. I believed it was true, but I'm not quite sure. And other times when I knew things, I felt more like I know this is true. I could sense it's true. It was different than thinking. So I said, what if the first one, what if the one where I could feel things, where things were being shared, what if that was my spirit? What if I just was taught improperly? What if I just grew up and... Somebody said, Rich, I want you to think, 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 think all the time. And I never came up with the answers because that's how they were thought, and they kept on the same long line of thinking. They did it the same way. They didn't change anything. 
where that was true. So I said, if this is my spirit, I was going to let it unfold. Now, the first thing I did in doing that, I said, if it really is my spirit, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sincerely do my best not to think and to just listen to that information that's being shared with me. If I could do it one time, can I do it twice in one day? If I could do it twice in one day, could I do it 12 times? And if I could do it 12 times, could I do it for 10 hours or 20 hours or even 24 hours a day? So I started off not knowing anything. I never read a book. I never had a teacher. I started off sitting on a couch all by myself. <laughs> and the information, um, the information that I was looking for didn't come. So I made more of a self-effort, and that was key, making my own self-effort. Making more of a self-effort to learn how to quiet my mind. I said, if that was my spirit, then I'm going to reduce all my thoughts. I'm not going to think anymore, and I'm just going to listen to what's being shared with me. What if that was clogging the experience? What if my active mind that was thinking all the time, that people said, think about this and think about that and think about that. I got really good at it. I was 40-some years old, like 41 years old. I was great at thinking all the time. I was awesome at it. What if that was interfering with what my spirit wanted to communicate? So in learning how to quiet my mind and opening up myself and finding a different way of life, it took time. It took an effort. Now what I found out later on that I didn't know at the time was that that's exactly how spiritual progression works. You have to make your own self-effort. It's your own self-achievement. I can't just read a book. I found out that I can't read the books and just repeat the words that somebody else wrote. I found out that I can't go to a class, which is probably why I never did, um, or I never read a book. That when I go to people and I listen to the words, I just can't repeat <coughs> what they're saying and say I'm spiritual. I found that spiritual growth has to do with the reshaping of yourself. It has to do with looking out in life with a different set of eyes, with seeing life differently, but having a different understanding, and in living your life accordingly with this new higher understanding. And the only person that can do that for me was me. It was it. I couldn't get somebody else to help me out. I couldn't go and pay someone and say, can you just put this inside of my body? It didn't work. It was the only thing that I know of that I had to do myself, and there was no and if or buts about it. So in this quest, I realized that um, as I started going in this direction, I also saw, um, I started seeing images. I started picking up on information. And in each image, uh, or each piece of, uh, in each picture that I would see, I found out later on, I didn't know at the time, was everything contained an essence. And in every single essence was some kind of meaningful information that was always truthful. It never lied. So in my quest, and I knew the opposite was true for, for my mind. My mind would tell me things that it believed was true all the time, but it really wasn't. It would have me go in a direction that really wasn't beneficial for my life. It would have me do things that always worked against me or counter, um, uh, counterproductive in my life. So in this new way, I'm exploring my spirit. I'm learning how to quiet my mind. I'm opening myself up. And I found out that one of the necessities was not just saying, okay, I've done my job, here's me. I had to go and self-achieve something. I had to make some kind of self-effort. And my self-effort came from this. My self-effort came from learning how to surrender myself to welcoming that information that I experienced in certain moments of my life and things just came to me. I had to open myself up to my, or surrender myself to a higher way of living. I had to go and open myself up so that I became a part of something that was greater than me. I didn't know how to do that. I learned control about life. I learned that I control everything. If I want somebody to do something, I could either use guilt, or I could raise my voice, or I could, I could force myself on them in some way, or tell them I'm a police officer, I'm a martial arts instructor, and maybe I'll get what I wanted. I learned how to control situations. I learned that if I wanted things in my life to work out, that not only would I have to control my actions and make the right actions, but I would have to make those actions work. I would have to convince other people. I would control people, I would control my life, I would control how things work out, what people thought of me. Everything was about control. And now what they're sharing with me, or what I'm starting to get for the very first time, is that it's just the opposite. It's about surrendering. 
It's about letting yourself go and having faith that there really is a greater energy out there. That there really is a spiritual force. That there really is a spiritual essence. And its only purpose is to promote the goodness in our life. To lead us to better and better experiences. That's all it is. I found out that when I wasn't in tune with that, my experiences weren't that great. Look where I was. I was 40-some years old. I was tens of, tens of thousands of dollars in debt. I left all the money in the house to my ex-wife, my child. I was living in a one-floor apartment that I'm not used to. I was used to living in a home where I had people above me, where I could hear every yell, every word that they ever said. I quit my martial arts. I was unhappy. And now I'm pursuing this with no help. It doesn't get much worse than that. Not that there isn't worse, but it didn't get much worse for that in my life. I was at an all-time low. There was times where I got so depressed I couldn't brush my teeth. I looked at the toothbrush and I said, I can't do that today, it's too hard. Or I wore the same clothes every single day. I think the reason why I'm telling you all this is because it's the truth. And it's the fact that it's an experience that I had, but there's ways of making it better. And if you can see that I was capable of making something better and I can explain to you how it all became, or how it all began, everybody can do the same. I'm not special. I'm no different than anyone else. You guys are all special. We're special together. We all have the same spirit. The spirit's ability is amazing. It's us being unlearned in life and not losing our spirit that makes life so difficult. Like I said, we live in a spiritual world unspiritually. So I kept on going in this direction and um, as I started going in this direction, I started learning how to quiet. I started learning how to quiet my mind and learning how to hold on to those moments of quiet and peacefulness. I started learning how to surrender myself even better. Again, I had to make adjustments where I had to lose control of my life. And I got to see how many times I had control of my life, how much I controlled other things. I also, as I started doing that and learning how to surrender, I got better at acknowledging when information didn't come from me, when I felt like that wasn't me. That was someone else, that was me. And I just grew. It got better. I learned, that, I learned that spiritual life is about progression. In our world, in our lifetime here on this earth, that our life can grow and grow and grow and never reach its full capabilities, not even close. So life is always about spiritual progression. Okay. And you're gonna hear me say okay, it's just me answering them because they're reminding me to say all the things. <laughs> um, so in this so now I have this now I have this new way of communicating that I'm not used to and I'm learning and it's trial and error I went through lots of frustrations I went through lots of disappointments and feeling anger and I went through all that and as time went on, and it got better and better and better, I understood why I got angry. I understood why I got disappointed. I understood why I had a resentment. And that was key. The fact that for the first time, I actually had a definition on why I got angry, why I made myself angry about things. And I could change it. It's because I didn't understand before, I couldn't change anything about myself. So now I felt, here's where the wisdom was coming. So I allowed myself, I surrendered myself, and wherever it is that I wanted, I was picking up information about, that's what I did. If they wanted to talk about the mountains, or I got directed to the mountains, and I started seeing the soil, and I started seeing, you know, how the ground is laid out, and the, the problems with the water, or what water does for our life, and how it's like an intermediary, intermediary between us and the, the other side, I would just let myself go. When I found that, I said, okay, this is what I want to do today. Here's where I want to learn. I want to learn about relationships. I want to learn about my life. All of a sudden, the connection broke that I had. And I was just like, it's gone. It's, it's gone. Like I said, I was all new to this. So it went away. For a day, two days, I couldn't get it back. I went back and retraced all my steps, and I, was, I, went, I drove myself crazy, retracing all my steps, going, I had it. I started getting this information, where did it go? And then I came back to the point where I wanted something, and that was my life lesson. My life lesson is that when it comes to doing things in a loving way, which is what was happening to me, I wasn't used to that. I didn't know what love is. Love is huge in our life. 
And yet, how many people can write down what love is and be accurate about it? We don't take time to understand what the essence of love is. I didn't take time to understand what the essence of love is. Yet I got married and said I was in love, and I didn't have a clue about it. I didn't know what it was. Nobody ever taught me, and I didn't learn for myself. So in this way, I was learning that as the information was coming to me, they didn't want anything in return. And that's what the life lesson was for me. I wanted something. The essence of want is not included in the essence of love. There is no wanting. If an angel came and sat right down in front of us and helped every single person in this group and went right around the circle, the angel wouldn't want anything because the angel's loving. When it comes to the essence of loving, there's certain guidelines in it. And I'm not saying that I understand all the guidelines, but I can tell you the guidelines that I understand. One of them is there's not the essence of wanting. You never want anything. If I wanted something, that means that there wouldn't be no love. There wouldn't be any true guidance because I would want something in return. There wouldn't be any true encouragement because I would want something, what I just said. I really wouldn't be giving you the true essence of support because I wanted something in return. But when you eliminate the essence of wanting, and I show you guidance, or I show you support, or I show you encouragement, you now capture the true essence and you can feel that. What they shared with me about spiritual, your spiritual body and your spiritual energy is that it's always sincere. And it's that true energy that you can feel, that you can pick up. And in that feeling of what you pick up, we call that an experience. And in our own experiences, I get to recognize what support really feels like. I get to recognize what um, guidance really feels like. I get to recognize, recognize what um, nurturement really feels like. So that when I feel that in the future, or I want to express it, I go, here's what it feels like. And it's important for me to make people feel that. That means I can't want anything in return if I want to get that true essence or communicate that true essence. I was learning how to be spiritual. They were giving me guidance about how spiritual energy works and how the purity of what was created has to be kept because it wasn't designed for us to place in anything that we want to place in, much like our bodies. You know, for years I grew up eating pasta and the meatballs, and because I felt my family, you know, what, we were Italian, we ate everything. And then my body started, after a while, going sour. And then it wasn't feeling very good, and it started acting up on me. And I was young, you know, I was like in my 30s. And then I realized that I can't just put anything I want in my bodies and make my body healthy. It's not for me what I want. I want this and I want that and it's going to make the body healthy. My body was created for me. And in that creation, that divine source that created this body said, and I made it a certain way. If you put oil in it, it won't work. If you stick gas in me, I won't work. If I put bad food in me, it's not going to work. And I think it's also part of creation when, when something, I put something in my body and my body shows it. You know, I have a pain or, you know, I have a rash or something gives off or my knee doesn't work right or my ankle twists or, you know, my hips go out. I think it's great because what if it didn't? What if my body just kept on getting sick and I didn't see any response? It wouldn't give me any indication. So I realized it's the same thing with spiritual energy. It works a certain way. It's not up for me. I was not put on this earth so that I could change it. I have to be in alignment with it. I have to surrender myself with it. It's there to teach me a better way about life than what I've learned in school or around the people that helped me grow up. So as, then, as time went on and I just wanted to learn about life because that's all I cared about. I learned about life. I learned about life. And I just kept it to myself for years. I just kept on listening. And I learned a valuable lesson in all of this. And I didn't know it at the time, and I'll say that often. I didn't know it at the time, but later on, I got the understanding behind it all. When I was surrendering myself to something, when I was surrendering myself to a greater knowledge or a greater way of living or what I felt was being helpful to me, I realized that there was a time in my life where that wasn't true. I was doing everything by myself. I never felt more alone in my life when I did everything by myself. For the first time, I didn't feel alone anymore. I felt like I was actually being helped. I felt like that things were being communicated and there was help in my life. Not from other people, though. From a source with a lot of wisdom. I also realized there was times in my life when I didn't have it, but now I did, 
and I didn't want it to let it go. And for the first time, I was grateful. I was learning that not only the spiritual essence that I was feeling now, but also to extend it into people, is that nobody has to do a thing for me. Nobody has to help me out. My wife or my child or my mother or my father or my sisters or my brothers, nobody. They don't have to take a moment out of their life to help me with mine. It's up to me. It's up to me to help myself. It's up to me to grow myself. And so I learned gratefulness when I realized that nobody has to help me out, that everybody's just a guest in my life. And it's up to how I treat the guest, on what I open myself up to, and the kind of person I am, on whether or not that guest wants to stay or not in my life. So here, I was learning for the first time to be grateful, to receiving information that I know didn't exist in my life before, and it might not, li it might not exist later on in the future. So I was going to do everything to make it feel like I was very happy that this guest was in my life. And I learned later on that's exactly how I treat other people now. So in my growth, in my spiritual growth, um, I continued to learn about my spirit. I spent, I got many years just growing myself, and I started talking into dictaphones and you know, listening to the information and then learning how to write it down. And as time went on, it started to expand. All of a sudden, I started picking up on energies that I know weren't the normal energies that I was picking up, that sources or that divine wisdom. They felt like not as divine. I was just like, who's this? <laughs> and so all of a sudden, they started sharing with me about life, about their life, about their life here on earth. But they weren't here anymore. That was totally new to me. Totally new, totally different. I had no idea what I was doing. I wasn't even quite sure if it was all true. So when I got done with the conversation with this guy, um, I could feel who it was connected to. It was connected to a woman that I haven't talked to in a year and a half. She used to be neighbors when I was still married. And so with a little incentive and support, I called the girl up. And it's the first time I spoke to her. And I said, I know this is going to sound crazy. There's a lot that's happened in my life since, since we've talked. I was just being honest. I'm sure I did sound crazy. <laughs> but I said, there's a chance I might be connected with someone who's passed in your life. And she stopped me before I got to say life and said, what? <laughs> you think you can do what? <laughs> I said, I know it sounds crazy. Now, this was crucial in my time. It was crucial because for the first time, I was showing faith. I learned that my mind holds belief. I believe it's true. Faith is the next step up. Faith is either speaking or acting on that belief. So I can say I believe this is true, but not act on it, not do anything on it, and I'll never know whether it's true or not. Faith is saying, I believe this is true, and I'm going to act on it. So that's what I did. I allowed it, again, to prove itself. So now what I did was... I started talking to her. I said, just tell me if it makes sense. If it doesn't, please stop me. And I said, I'll get off the phone and I apologize for any inconvenience. <laughs> and I started talking to her and I said, there's a guy that got connected to me. He makes me feel like he was a father or a father figure in your life. But he also makes me feel like he could have been like a brother also. So I'm not sure if he, your father's passed and he was also like a brother in your life or vice versa. He tells me that he died from a disease. He tells me that there was some kind of drug addiction going on in his life, and I just kept on talking. And about 10 minutes later, I stopped talking because she was crying so hard on the other end of the phone. And in her tears, when she finally subsided her tears, she says, I was just asking for my brother the other day. She says, yesterday, she goes, I asked for my brother. I said, please, if you're alive and you can hear me, talk to me in some way or communicate to me in some way. I miss you terribly. It's exactly what she shared with me. All the information that I shared with her was absolutely true. Her brother was like a father. That there was 
there was problems inside the family, issues inside the family where she didn't have that fatherly support that she was supposed to, and her brother acted that way. That he actually did die of disease, there was actually drug abuse and all the other things that she confirmed. So it was the first time, it was the first time that, again, I was starting to see validation. Maybe, maybe we really are connecting with your spirit. I still had doubts. Even though everything made sense to me and everything flowed, maybe there really was a spiritual connection. Maybe we really can communicate spiritually, and nobody just teaches us this. Maybe we just grow up from spiritually unlearned people. Not that they're good or bad, they're just spiritually unlearned. Like me, growing up in life. So, that turned into me opening myself up and giving me the support and the encouragement by seeing a positive result to something that I was doing, showing faith, and allowing the next spirit to come in, and the next spirit to come in, and the next spirit to come in. How long amount of time was this for you when, when you started to say where you are right now in your story? In my story? From where I started to the story? Yeah. A year? Okay. About a year? from the first time that I communicated with that person, because a lot of it was just, a lot of it was just me, because that's all I wanted to do. I, like I said, I didn't know if I believed in ghosts or spirits or God. I just wanted a better life. I just wanted to make better choices in my life. And so it kept on progressing, and wisdom came and started getting shared with me about the world and about life, so I started sharing it with it, with my ex-wife at the time and my child and my family. And I got the greatest response. And I can sum it all up from my brother. You have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> you think you talk to dead people? <laughs> you think you're getting messages from God and from angels? <laughs> now, he was in California. He offered to fly in to give me the support and find me the proper medical care that I needed, which was nice of him in a way. So... So I shared with them, so I shared with them this. I said, it's not true. He goes, if you have this philosophy about life, how do you know you just created it? How do you just didn't come up with it all? How do you know that you just made it all up? And I said, it's really simple. I said, my life's getting better. And that's not the direction I was going into. I was going downhill. And it's all changed. And I told him about the experiences I had, and I told him what was going on. And I said, if everybody can say that about their life, that it's getting better, you know you're in a good direction. If not, you're in the same direction I was in. My life wasn't getting any better. I wasn't seeing the improvement. I wasn't seeing the progression. I didn't have the added understanding about life. I didn't see life with a different perspective the way I do now. Proof is key. It's, it's not good enough just to say, hey, this is what I see, and you can't prove it. The angels the essence of God, and the other spirits that offer their insight, that offer their, in, okay, that offer their insight, um, are, are here to show that they exist without really showing that they exist. And it's through our own life, it's through our own experiences that we're being guided when we no longer feel alone that we can see that proof in itself. But we have to do our part. Remember, they're not here to make our life better. They're here to guide us so that we have the faith and we have the ability to make our life better ourselves. There's a reason for it. As they were just sharing something with me and I, I kind of lost it. As time was going on and I started to do more readings, I'm going to start it off that way to see it, to see if it comes to me. I st okay. I started to do I started to do more readings, wanting to see the proof, wanting to see if it was really, really true. What was important is holding on to the life lessons that I've learned and carrying them into my life currently. So I learned there's, there's three different parts to spiritual progression. One is your understanding. You could read a book or listen to someone speak, and you can say, yep, I understand it all. I, I get it all. And you go, great. That's your first step. Your second step is verbalizing what you understand. So when you say, like, yep, I get it all, sit in front of people and explain it. <clears throat> sit in front of people and talk. Learn how to verbalize that essence that you understand and put it into words that are both meaningful and will touch people's hearts. Your third step is actually to be your understanding. 
changing your spirit inside, or I shouldn't say changing, the reshaping of yourself inside so that you live your understanding every single day. So you don't wake up and go, I'm going to be loving today. You want to wake up and go, I'm already loving. You want to wake, and not that you can't improve, but you're already that way. You don't have to make a conscious effort to be loving. It's just a part of you. It's just who you are now. I'm going to be truthful today. I have words of wisdom. I'm going to act when I feel like that I'm being directed to act or to, um, to share some insight with people that I'm supposed to share and not be afraid of it all. So it was important that you see the proof. So I saw the proof inside of my life. I started seeing the evolving. I started seeing the proof in it and proof in it all. So as I learned the understanding, now was my time to verbalize it. So I started speaking. So I would hold, I would hold classes um, for anybody who just wanted to show up and just talk about life. And I'd have people debate me. I'd have my friends come over and just say, I'm going to talk about life and please debate me. It was important not to try to make something fit, not to try to be right in other people's eyes. It was important that you had a really true connection, that you really were spiritually involved, evolved, and that in your evolvement, you are now seeing a different kind of life that you can show it, you can prove itself. Does this make sense so far? Does anybody have any questions yet? Are you sure? Don't be afraid to ask a question because it might be spiritually necessary to your life. Yes? No? You sure? Okay. So time goes on, and um, I start doing more readings for people. I start giving more insight to people. And I've learned a bunch of life lessons on the way. Uh, one of them is what I was sharing with you before about people being a guest in your life. Another one is about being grateful. Another one is about love. They also shared with me um, insight about what unconditional love is. They also shared insight with me about the reason why we have a brain and we have a spirit, why there's two different voices going on inside of us that has the right to choice. So I'm just going to talk about that just for a second. What they shared with me is that rich here on this earth, you were created in such a way where you have to make your own decisions. You have to learn how to grow your spirit. You have to make a self-effort. It's all about your own self-achievement, your own self-accomplishment. But you're also going to have the ability of talking yourself out of it. And there's your choice. So here in life, you can follow like what I did. is I went to a point in my life where I just said enough was enough, and I wanted to follow a different way to communicate in life. And I learned how to use the power of my spirit, which is my will. The strength of my, my spirit is called my will. I learned how to willfully decide that I'm not thinking anymore or reducing my thoughts so that I can now communicate in a different way. They shared with me that you don't always have choice. That there's going to be a time in your life that as you grow your spirit rich, you're going to place yourself more in balance. So what happens is this, is that when we grow up, we grow up to think all the time. So the way our alignment is, is that our mind came first. My mind, I was taught to think about life, to try to get the answers to life, to try to interconnect with life, and all the different spiritual essences about life with my mind. What nobody told me is that my mind's not capable of doing it. It can't feel an essence. It can't pick up on or sense an essence. It doesn't have the understanding behind the essence, which is why it can't, make it, it can't come up with a decision for me. It can't see the future. It can't see what's about to happen. It can't tell me, yes, Rich, this is good or this is not good for our life. Let's follow this one. But my spirit can. My spirit has that ability. They told me, they said, Rich, when people pass, you leave behind your brain, you leave behind your body. We don't think anymore. We don't have that. We don't make those choices. We don't come in such a way where we can decide that we're going to do bad today. An angel can't come down and sit right in front of our room and just say, I'm going to lie to everyone. The angel's not capable of lying. And it's not, because, it's not because we can't lie. It's because they're different than us. They don't have that second voice so that they have to make a decision. They've evolved to the point where their spirit has come first. So here in life, I've learned to think, 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 think. My mind came first, interacted with life. Whatever I thought, my body followed. 
If something made me upset, whether it was true or not, somebody could be telling me a lie that somebody close to me died. If I believed it, I was going to cry. It doesn't have to be true. I'm going to cry. All I have to do is believe it. My spirit was different. My spirit saw things differently. So I was thinking with my mind. My body then would react to whatever my mind was thinking, and then my spirit came last. I would use my spirit very little. When you evolve yourself, when you do a different alignment, and your spirit becomes first, your spirit senses and picks up all the different energies and the truths around you, about other people, about your life and where it's going, about where everything's going to fall into place. Your mind then, your mind then uh, is used by your spirit to create images inside of your spirit, inside of your mind. And it's the meaning behind these images that gives us the greatest insight to what your spirit is feeling and what your spirit is sensing. And then your body comes last. So what happens is this. Your spirit comes first. Your mind's going, oh, you don't need me anymore? I'm going to be at rest. I'm not going to think. Because you're not asking me to figure out life anymore. You're asking your spirit to do it. So your mind starts to shut down. Your mind starts to not think as less because you're not asking it to figure out life anymore. So now because your mind is thinking less and your spirit's doing all the transferring of the information, understanding it all, your body's at peace. Because then your mind's not in torment or in confusion or stressed out, or worried. You don't have all those experiences anymore because your spirit's doing all the and you're connecting. So your body's at peace. So your spirit gets to live in a peaceful body. So it's just a shift in the whole alignment of what was created for us in the first place. But because we were spiritually unlearned or learned from people that were spiritually unlearned growing up, people taught us a different shift. They taught us to think all the time. So that's all that happened to me. It was just a shift that went on and I interacted and I interacted differently. Now the people that have passed, the people that have ascended, what they shared with me was that um, we don't think and because we don't have brains and we don't have bodies anymore. So I'm not limited to what the spirit inside of your body is limited to, Rich. Meaning that I only move according to what my body can move. There, they don't have a body. They can move and they can interact with other spiritual energies in any way that they want. They can change form, change shape, change images. But they don't think. So just like I was saying with an angel, can't lie to you, neither can they. There's a love essence on the other side. And again, this might contradict what other people might say, but I'm going to tell you what I've experienced. There's a love essence on the other side that has the greatest influence in the world on the people that have passed. And it's because such a great influence that it has on their spirit, they only do the loving thing, they only do the good thing. They might not understand it all, but that's what they do. Here on this earth, because we have choice, because we have this brain, we want to do the loving thing. We want to do the good thing. But when you look back in your life, how many times didn't you? Because you thought otherwise and because you were thinking otherwise. They have what we're trying to achieve down here. So now they have this great feeling, especially with the angels, because they don't think, and they just express this great love, uh, this loving essence. They have an influence on the people that have passed. Now, the people, when they were here, that passed, the people that were connected in our life, they were spiritually assigned, we were spiritually assigned to one another. So if I was raising, which I, which I did, um, a daughter, if I was raising a daughter, I was spiritually responsible for her. She's supposed to come to me for advice or for insight or to learn about life. Because when I gave birth, that's what happened. That's what I said. I want a child so I can raise and I can give them insight about life. When someone is detached from our life that either we haven't learned life lessons with or we can't communicate the way we want to communicate, we feel a spiritual de detachment. There's that essence of wanting saying, we want things a certain way. I won't be able to talk to them in this way. And so in our life here, when we have experiences with them, and I can talk to them in this way, it's my job to do my best to raise them in the best possible way to promote goodness and promote love in their life. When people pass inside of our life and we feel spiritually ripped or spiritually detached, we grew up, or I grew up, with the belief that that's it, they're dead. I can't communicate with them anymore. And that wasn't true. Somebody lied to me. The communication changed. They continued on with life. 
and the communication changed, and I had the ability to communicate with them again, or still, I should say, not, not again, but still. It was the way I was communicating in life that I had to change. Being able to see people that have passed, whether it be the people in my life or other people in uh, your life, it, it's still the same to me now. The more I grow my spirit, I see them as no different than I see the people in front of me. It's not ghosts, it's not spirits, it's people without the limitations of the bodies. Now, the awesome thing about it is, again, seeing the proof. So when you do the mediumship readings, or we talk to one another, and all of a sudden you get connected with someone who's passed in your life, and they tell you their name, or how they died, and the people in their family, and they tell you all the different spiritual messages. That's important. When I first started doing it, when I first started doing it, if I got somebody's name or how they passed away, I was like, oh my God, this is just amazing. And, and it is amazing at first. Because I grew up in a world where we never talked about that, and I didn't even know if that was possible. What I learned as time went on, though, is that when you talk about just the facts about their life, you say, oh my God, that's amazing, but you already know that information. You already know how they died. You already know their name. So I said, there's got to be more. I said, if they're really, I said, a God exists, and so do angels, and so do higher energies, and and I'm learning more and more and more about me just being a spirit and seeing myself in that way. And then what happens is that when, let me just, for a second, I lost what they wanted me to share. Okay. Okay. So when the people pass, I have to learn how to communicate differently. Now, what hasn't changed is their spiritual assignment to us, or their spiritual connection to us. I found that in um, doing readings for people and getting the spiritual messages, not just the information, but the messages from the other side, the messages that are going to provide insight for our life, or how they see things, are more important than the details. The details have their place, but it's the spiritual messages to improve our life that shows a true representation of the kind of involvement that's happened to them. Now what's important is, is, was this. The first time I was doing a reading for someone, it was a one-to-one -one reading. And a lot of times information gets shared with me and I go, oh my God, like, you know, how do I say that? Like, I don't have a clue. But learning to have faith, remember, faith is speaking and acting on what you believe is true. And learning how to have faith on that. So they're sharing, in, they're sharing information. And after I get, you know, the, the details about the person, all of a sudden, the child comes through um, and says, she's still my mom. And I was like, okay, you're still his mom. So I always say in the readings that I might not understand it, but I always say it because I know that everything that they say has greater meaning than what I'm probably even explaining to people. And he, she says, I'm still her mom. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? Like, what do you mean you, she's still her mom? And then this great explanation came. If I didn't say that she's telling me she's still your mom, I might have passed it and went on to something else because that's how spiritual energy works. You have to show faith in everything that they're sharing with you because it's meaningful. So what she shares to me is that she says, you know, Rich, when we're here on this life, she says, people talk to us. And she says, and we listen to what they say. But people also talk in a different way just by their actions. How they live their life every single day is how my spirit, when it was in a body, was picking up on my family. If, you know, they came together and they showed an expression of love to one another, um, and the moments that they did it, I learned that. If they showed a non-loving way towards one another in other moments, I learned that way too. If they didn't want to talk to me, or if they said, you know, I don't, I'm not interested in, I'm not interested in talking to you right now, go to your room, she says, I learned that. She goes, I learned how not to talk to my parents. She says, so, when we're spiritually assigned to one another, she says what's more important to our spirit, which we don't know here on this earth, is that we pick up on everything. And every single moment that our parents do in life represents either some kind of help or non-help for us, or confusion for us. So if my parents are acting in a non-loving or non-spiritual way, I pick up on that and I learn that. She says nothing's changed. She says spirit energy is so amazing, I'm still spiritually assigned to my mom. 
She says, if my mom gives up on life, she goes, I learn how to give up on life. I learn how not to make myself go forward, just like I was here on this earth. She says, if my mom becomes angry at things and puts people down, she goes, I learn that. She goes, but if my mom goes on with life, I learn courage. She says, if my mom has the perseverance to make something out of her life, she goes, my mom's teaching me how to do it myself. She goes, we still need the people here on this earth. Don't think that we're all wise, because we're not. Our level of understanding here on this earth is the same level of understanding we have on the other side. She says, we don't think anymore. She says, but I'm not full of wisdom. I still need my mom's guidance. She says, so can you please tell my mom to do better in life? Can you please encourage her to make the efforts in her life so that I can learn from her, just like if I was here on this earth? I thought it was powerful. I thought it was so amazing that it made so much sense to me when, when they shared that with me. And so looking at, the, looking at the whole picture and talking about how spiritual energy works, it makes total sense on when we're given the responsibility to spiritually grow our kids, that that spiritual responsibility doesn't change for one bit. Even though we can't communicate them the way we want, we still communicate with them. And they still communicate with us. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> so, based on what we do here, will <coughs> elevate the growth of, say, our children? Influence. Our yes. Influence. Okay. Parents influence their kids. They always make their own choices in life. They can follow what their head thinks or what they know. But parents are spiritually assigned to their kids, which is, when we're kids... We think our parents are gods. We grow up into this world going, that's our God. Whatever they say, that's mom and dad. That's the truth. Well, for certain years. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Shut up. So when we first come into this world, we have that belief. Now, if we're not spiritually wise, if we never learn that, there's going to be moments in our life where I know when my daughter was growing up, I didn't have all the right words. Spiritually, she felt that. Mom, dad felt short. He didn't have the right words for me. That means I have to go to other people. I have to go and find insight from other people. Or, you know, I asked something for Dad, and he yelled at me. Or, you know, he told me to do this, or he told me to do that. There was one particular time when it came to my daughter where um, me and her mom were talking about a subject matter that she shouldn't hear. So she came down the steps, and she says, what are you talking about? And I said, look, Mom and Dad are talking right now. Will you please go upstairs? Um, and when we're done, we'll call you back down. She goes, okay. She went back upstairs. They brought me back to that moment when that happened, which I totally just didn't forget, uh, which I totally forgot. But she, they brought me back to this moment when they were telling me the life lesson. They said, Rich, in that life lesson, what you were telling your daughter is this. She says, under, they said, understanding is everything. Spirits are made to understand. You tell a spirit something without any understanding, you fall short. It has to be with the understanding, so it gives their spirit a chance to sense the truth in it or not. So when I told, when I shared my daughter away, thinking that's how I was raised and that was the good thing to do, what I was actually telling my daughter was that mom and dad are talking and we're not going to tell you. We have a secret right now. My daughter learned how to keep secrets. My daughter learned how to go upstairs and at that point go, oh, mom and dad doesn't have to share anything with me. Because I didn't help her understand, I just gave her a direction, I just told her what to do. I can keep things from mom and dad. So they brought me back and they were showing me the outcome of just being unlearned. Not that I did something wrong, I just was unlearned. I just didn't understand. Nobody teaches us about the spiritual side of life, about how energies affect one another. Nobody teaches us that. And so in my quest to learn more and more and more, they started sharing with me about the true understanding about how life works. So yes, we influence the kids. And, you're, and what Jen was saying is so true, for a certain time, our influence has an effect on them less and less and less as they get older. At some point, they're becoming their own spirit. They're making their own choices, which is good. But for the few short years that we have them, we should do our best to show them a loving presence from us. But what's more important is that for them to experience it and go like, look at mom, look at dad. Like, they're loving. They're not just saying it. They're not just telling me I love you once in a while. They make me feel it every single day. And it's in that experience that they can recognize what love feels like and what love is. 
So when they make choices later on in life and they choose the right person to spend the rest of their life with or share life with, if that person says, I love you to them, they're going to go, yep, and I can feel it too. I can sense it inside of you. Spiritual energy is an experience. And the more we understand that and bring that into our life, the more we're going to be prompted to make the changes inside of our own life so we can express that experience to other people, especially the ones that we're spiritually assigned to. It's very important. It's also got a power so great, besides, the, besides love, the truth, is so amazing in the reshaping of our life, it's critical. So what, I, what they shared with me was this. They said, Rich, you can be the most loving person in the world. And they said, if I came up to you and I had this great loving presence about myself, you would welcome me into your life going, I could feel the love in him, he must have something good to say. And all of a sudden, I start to talk, and my words fell short. I have no wisdom. You, you felt the loving presence, you can feel my touch, everything feels good, there's a harmony, there is a, you know that I'm going to be guiding and helping and nurturing, but the words aren't there. So now you go like, oh, he's the most loving person in the world, but he's nonsense, he don't know what he's talking about. It's important, it's important to grow the wisdom. If I speak in a truthful way with full of wisdom, but I yell it at you, and I scream it at you, and I'm critical at the same time of you, then what happens is that you don't listen either. You, fall, you go away and you go, I'm not listening to him. But you put love and wisdom together, it's the most powerful form of communication. It also shows a grown spirit or somebody making a self-effort inside of their life. It also shows somebody that the people that are experiencing that kind of a person, they see a beauty. They see a beauty, they see a self-effort, a self-achievement that they want to be a part of. People always move towards the beautiful thing. So if you see a beautiful rose or a beautiful flower, you don't walk away from it, you want to stand in its presence. It's the same thing with the beauty inside somebody's spirit. People move towards that beauty because they have the same spirit and they want to learn how to do it themselves. Is there any questions? I have a question. Yes. <laughs> we have until we have until quarter uh, eight o'clock. I, I mean, I until Joanne throws us out, so oh, you okay. gotta go. So. <laughs> <laughs> How okay. do you filter them, or how do I say it? Like that they're not talking to you twenty four hours a day. Like, how do you shut them up, I or could. not shut? Like, how do you do that? It's really cool. So are you experiencing the same thing? Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I wish I was. We wish. We wish no, I was. I think I was. <laughs> but I thought, how do you... So when I, first, when I first started doing this, you know, a lot of times I do analogies that are related to people's jobs. And so I know that when, you know, we, I've got first gotten jobs, I didn't have a clue on what I was doing at the job. Thankfully, somebody said, oh, you know, let me show you how to do it. And I had somebody else's guidance to learn how to do it all. And then when questions came up, I knew how to handle those questions or what actions to take. It's the same thing when it comes to spiritual life. Nobody teaches us this. Nobody gives us their understanding. So it was really difficult for me at first because I didn't know whether I should shut them off. I didn't know how to shut them off. But yes, my life was insane. I would talk to spirits 24-7. I couldn't get any sleep. They wake me up in the middle of the night. I'm going to the bathroom. They're following me around. Going to a restaurant. There's a guy. He died of lung cancer. There's this guy. There's a little kid's going. It can go on and on and on and on and on. I have so many stories to tell. And then, as time grew inside of me, there, again, spiritual energy is all about progression. It's all about learning to do it better. It's all about self-growth. So I learned that it was nothing more than a communication, is that, and I'm part of that communication. Energetically, I don't have to talk to them, but energetically, I was opening myself up because I wasn't quite sure that I wasn't supposed to do that. So I opened myself up to communicate all the time. Since then, I've learned a lot and have grown a lot. So now the only time that they communicate with me is when there's a sincere need or when it's very, very meaningful, such as before a reading. Or um, if I'm around someone that the Spirit's been trying to talk to where they haven't been able to get through and they really want to share something with me. The most important thing to know is that Spirits aren't here to talk to us. Spirits are entertaining their own life and they're learning, um, they're learning the new life that they have. When something is meaningful to them and also meaningful to the person here on this earth, that's when the greatest connection happens. 
it can happen outside of that where if something's just meaningful to the spirit that they need to talk to their mom or talk to their son, that can also happen. Um, but it's, spirits don't need to talk to us. It's always got to be in some meaningful way. Now, when I say in a meaningful way that it's got to be in the promotion of, it's got to be in the enhancement of some kind of spiritual life lesson or some spiritual understanding or something to do with love. So it's always, in the, it's always uh, with the greater good in mind. But yeah, I couldn't shut it off. I was, cr- I was crazy. I always tell people too. I was like, I was nuts. If you saw me back then, I was just like, I'm nuts. <laughs> I have a question, Rich. Yeah. Did they ever talk to you about signs and how they, how and why they would show signs? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question too. Um, when people talk about spiritual communication, what I share with, or people say like, well, how do you grow your spirit, or how is the communication communication given to you? Like, I was just doing a a coaching session today um, with a gentleman. And I said, well, tell me how you received the information. So he starts telling me how. He goes, and is that the right way of doing it? I said, here's the cool thing, how how it's all designed. It's always the right way. Like, everything is the right way. You can do it anyway. As long as you learn to shut your mind down um, and you create an opportunity for you to receive the information and you surrender yourself to it, if you want to do a meditation beforehand, if you want to do a mantra beforehand, if you want to do no meditation and no mantra, if you don't want to say a prayer, it all works. It's all the same way. You all get the same, same result. So what they shared with me is that the way spiritual energy works, it influences things. So we're being communicated in life in all ways, especially when um, you hear about the things um, that happened to Jen and Christine when they include in their life of growing their life, but they do it in harmony with the people that that were close to them, that passed in life, that every time you say, we're doing this in your honor, or let's do this together, that spirit who's very much alive and interested in helping, it that love essence that we're projecting, they pick up on. It's the essence of love that unites people together when you do things without wanting. It brings the two worlds closer together. There's nothing stronger than the essence of love that I've ever seen. Truth reshapes our life and reshapes the kind of spirit that we have, but it's the essence of love that is part of the greatest communication in the world that allows people to listen to what other people have to say. So when it comes to, um, when it comes to them influencing our life, they also influence the life around us. So they can cause us, if I'm going down the road, they can cause my head to turn to look at a license plate to see something that is important that would represent somebody who was meaningful that passed in my life. They can influence the animals so that, and at the same time, make sure that we're doing something where we can see that animal. So if, um, like with Christine with the owls, if, um, if her son wanted to come and put an owl in the backyard, it wasn't just good enough for the owl to go in the backyard. She had to make sure that he had to make sure that Christine or her husband was going to be influenced enough to go in the backyard at that time. So, and the reason why we're influenced is because, again, it allows ourselves to decide. We have to learn how to accept that we have a spirit and put more faith in what our spirit is telling us. There's a whole greater world out there that exists that nobody teaches us about. By not saying, by not having an angel come down before us and go, I exist. I'm going to touch every single person's life. There's going to be a cross right here, or there's going to be my sign on everybody's, you know, my, their left shoulder. And everybody's going to see that, and I'm going to start sending everybody emails every single day. <laughs> and you have that evidence. It doesn't work that way, right? It works where they work through us because they're interested in just growing your faith. They're not interested in changing the world. They're interested in growing your faith. The world is fine by itself. I mean, we screw it up because, because we think too much and we make choices that aren't in harmony with the world. But when they, influence, when they influence us and they influence the different animals, it's just a way of different communication of showing that not only do they exist, but it's also a sign that they want to get stronger and they want to get closer in your life. And the best way we can do that, again, is to see them not as dead, to see them as very much alive, include them in our life every single day. But not just ask things for them, like, I hope you're here, and I hope you're here, I hope you're here. Make them feel it. Talk to them like they were here, like, wasn't that a great experience today? Thank you so much. Will you continue to provide guidance for me or give me insight? I'm going to listen every single time that you can. And you learn how to surrender yourself to being influenced. When you receive information, there's not a fanfare. It's not like, oh my God, I just got something from my daughter. It's not like that at all. It's very subtle. 
Mm. And here's why. Spirit, your spirit, this is how they communicate. It's not special to your spirit. So your spirit is gone. I've been doing this way for 10,000 years or how many years. I know your mind might think it's special because it's something your mind can't do. And it goes, oh my God, look at that. We can't do that. Mm -hmm. But to your spirit, it's very, very simple. This is just how we communicate. So when I say things come to you in a very subtle way or a very quick way, that's exactly how you're going to feel it. But as long as you can say to yourself, that wasn't me. That's how you know that you're receiving outside energy and you're receiving an influence. It's always an influence from, from spirits. So we say this all the time, but then is it correct in saying there is no such thing as coincidence? Yes, a thousand percent. The whole world is created with a balance and a harmony. And even when we put the world out of balance and harmony, it shifts and readjusts itself to try to bring back the balance and the harmony. So, and again, this is just something I've learned, is that when people say, oh, it just happened by chance or mm -hmm. by luck, None of that's true. It's not how the world is designed. There's a natural harmony that exists. It's our misunderstandings about life or our lack of understanding that we'll use the word, oh, it's just luck or coincidence. But when you get a bigger picture about it and you see things in a perspective that you're not used to or you're not, have, you're not, you're not um, taught uh, in life, you get to go and witness all these great things that have happened in your life based on the information that's shared to you. So it's like a validation. But I can tell you that, yes, exactly what Jen said, there is no coincidences or luck. There's a harmony of a great design, of a great divine design that, that exists here on this earth. It shows you how magnificent that energy is that designed all this. Do they, do they question, do they give up on showing signs if you are close to it and you don't acknowledge it? Do, is there a point where they're always going to try and... So that's a, also a great question, too, which, you know, and i got to share this moment, too, um, that that shared with me back there about a past moment uh, during a reading. Um, so I might ask you to ask your question again, that's but i got to okay. share, share this moment. That's okay. Please remember it. Let's buy another one. Let's buy another one. So it was kind of awesome. There was a, uh, during a reading, um, when you do the readings, it's nothing more than letting your mind um, relax, not think anymore, and allow your spirit to communicate. And in the community, in the middle of the, doing this reading, all of a sudden, I went somewhere, and I'm going. All right, I got to pause your reading for a second, and because when you give, when you start to surrender yourself to the spiritual, the spiritual energies and the spiritual influence inside of your life, that comes first. So I've learned to my uh, what was self-important to me. It's it all has a, a realignment to it. So you know, having a nice job and the money. Not that it's not important to society but not to my spiritual growth. So in this part of my life, I focused on this. So during this reading, and, and all of a sudden I get directed, and, and what's happening is that they show me this image. And I'm standing before, um, I'm standing before an image of God. And I'm looking up at God, and I feel like I just came from the world, and I'm looking up at God. And I said, you know, I need your help. And... What he says to me, he says, you know, there was times in your life where you used my name in vain, where you cursed me, or you didn't have belief in me. There was times in your life where you did unloving things, and there was times in your life where you didn't do the good thing. There was times in your life where you asked advice to other people, but you didn't come to me. And now you're coming to me for help. And he says, and here's your help. So he gives me the help, and then he says, he says this, he goes, by all this time that you weren't listening to me, I was growing myself. I was making myself better. I continue to grow, I continue to expand. So that when you have a moment that you're willing to listen to the things that I have to say, I'm gonna be good at it. I'm gonna have great words of wisdom, it's gonna be insightful to you, it's gonna be loving, it's gonna to touch your heart, and it's gonna be meaningful to your life. He says, now turn around and look at your life and look at all the people in your life. He says, now go be the same way. And I thought it was inspiring. What he was telling, what I was learning in that, and it wasn't so much God, it was like the image of God, and um, usually it's some kind of angelic source that takes me, it's going to teach me some kind of life lesson. But it also had great meaning to the person in front of me that I didn't realize at the time. Because again, I just had to have faith that I was being taken here and I had to surrender myself, but it had great meaning to the person. And what they were sharing with you is that there is a love in life, and 
And again, when we need it most, no matter how many times I doubted, no matter how many times that I didn't believe or I questioned or, you know, I did some unloving things or not good things, God was right there or the angels were right there going, are you ready now, Rich? And they're like, here it is. There was no resentment. There was no anger. There was no, I wanted this or I wanted that or you should have done this earlier. It was, I'm here to help you. What they also taught me is that we're supposed to grow our own life. And we're not supposed to interfere and intrude with other people's lives until they welcome us in their life. Until they say, Rich, I need your insight or I need your help in some way. And it's at that time when I do that, if I do something in a successful way where I can give them some kind of wisdom or insight that they didn't see, they become grateful. They know I don't have to do it all the time. And at the very same time, I'm not intruding in life that I had to wait for them. So I learned how to live my life better based on that one little image or that one little scenario. I learned how to focus on myself. I learned how to wait for things to come to me and not say, oh, I want to tell this person because I know the right thing to do and it's going to help them and they're going to like me. I had to go and focus on my own life, live my own path, be very, very grateful and be very, very thankful of all the things that are coming in my life. And when somebody else's life got shifted around and came into my path, I did my best to give them the wisdom that I was accumulating before that. And we told the sense. What was your question? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was about the signs. If you don't acknowledge them or, you know, you're kind of close yeah. to it, do they stop giving you signs? Or, yeah. And the same goes if you acknowledge them, do they give you more signs? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When, um, when it's just like somebody in life, if you have a good friend in life and the person calls you up on the phone and you talk to them every third time, eventually they're going to feel like you don't want to talk to them, that you're making excuses. So don't think for one second that energetically they're not feeling that in a greater power. Because again, down here on this earth we have to think about it and we have to make a decision based on our thoughts. There they just see the truth. So it doesn't take three times, it just takes that one time that you do it. The more faith that you show, the more unity that you bring them closer together to the people that have passed. The more you create a loving essence that I want to unite with you, I want to share my life with you. They like that feeling, meaning that it's a response when you do that to them, just like here on this earth, it feels good to them. That's how, that's that creation I was telling you about how, well, the creation of life. Everything is spiritual and has a spiritual essence to it. So when we do things in a supportive, in a, in a good way, in a nurturing way to someone, the response that I feel when somebody does that to me is, I feel good. I'm like, thank you. And so it's in that way where I want to be in that person's presence even more. And then I also want to return the favor. I'm starting to build on the relationship, this loving relationship. So that's exactly what they do on the other side. Every time we make an effort, they feel special. You don't have to make an effort in their life. You don't have to include them in your life, just like you didn't have to hear. But they feel special. And it's a feeling that they get. It's a response that was created inside of them still that they carry from this earth, that they carry with them. And that's why it brings them closer. And plus, especially if your parents, you know, um, People always want the love of their parents. They want the guidance from their parents, but they also want to see their parents do better in life and succeed and move on with their life so that they can still learn from their parents. It's like here, like if I had a parent who just sat on the couch all the time and just watched, you know, TV, there's nothing I'm going to learn from that parent. I would want that parent to be different. I would want that parent to make me feel special, to have open conversations, to share life with me, but it might not be true. So I always tell people that, what I've seen on the other side and what they shared with me is that we never stop being their parents. And it's through our own life and the progression that they learn more and more and they become very proud of us and they're able to incorporate our life lessons into their own and move on. I think we're good. Any other questions? I did, I'm curious, how did you know with your first experience that it was your neighbor from a year and a half ago? How did you make that connection? It's all, it's all based on a feeling that you get inside. So when I first started doing that, you get a sense. So it's the same way how they were sensing me that they were a male. They weren't in front of me. I can't see that they were a male, but I could feel that it was a male. The same way he was communicating with me that he was not in the family, like he might have been like a father or a brother. All information is the same to my spirit. So to be able to communicate that with me and the fact that he died from the disease is the same way to say, I'm connected to her. Yeah. It's no different. So it's you had to same. learn how, what that meant, yeah. I guess. Yeah. As you were learning, you had to yeah. decipher what this feeling means and what that feeling means, right? Absolutely. What Jen said and what you're saying um, is 
I always tell people it's my interpretation. I get better at interpreting, interpreting the images and also the meaning that they're influencing me with. So the more I use my mind, the less interpretation or good interpretation I have. The more I keep my mind um, in a relaxed state and not thinking, the better the interpretation I have. I can get the true meaning behind the essences that they're sharing with me. Can you tell them your ending though? Say it again. Can you tell them the ending of your story? Well, it's, it's... Oh, I know what you mean. <laughs> so, so, in my life, I was telling you that, um, in my life, I said I went through uh, a time that was very, very difficult, you know, where I was in debt, I had my own place, um, I got divorced, um, my child was living with, um, you know, with my, uh, my ex-wife, and as the change in my life started happening, my life started reshaping and I started getting a new set of eyes and seeing life differently and a new understanding started coming to me. Because I shared a daughter with my ex-wife, I would share it with her. I would say, here's what's happening. Here's the person that my brother told everybody had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> so I'm sharing it with her and I would always say, if it makes sense, let me know. If it doesn't, please don't. So it made sense to her. And then the next time we talk, it made sense to her. The next time we talk, it made even more sense to her. And then when she saw the changes and the things that were happening in my life and how I was able to now to communicate differently, it showed more proof and validation about what I was saying to be true. And as I started having better experiences and I started growing more, she now took it upon herself to change her life and to change the kind of person that she was. I got divorced because I was unhappy and because there wasn't a lot of love with us, you know, between us at the time. The kind of love that we thought was love. And when I started changing and I started speaking differently and I started communicating differently and I started being more loving, and the same thing with Michelle, as she started communicating and learning and taking time in her life to do the things that she's supposed to do, we now started seeing each other differently than we previously were. Okay. So last year we got engaged and we're going to be, oh, we're going to be remarried in three weeks. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> and they have a beautiful house. Thank you. It's gorgeous. Um, it's exciting, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's very, very exciting. And what does your brother think now? Yeah. <laughs> he comes, now he comes to my classes. <laughs> the last time he was here in California, he goes, can I come to one of your classes? It's so cool too because, you know, and, you know, growing up and, you know, experiencing things with my family, I didn't have the best relationship in the world. I didn't have the, um, you know, when it came to my parents and family and my sister and my brother. And since the changes that have taken place in my life and they no longer see me as that same kind of person, they also question themselves. They question themselves and the kind of people that they are. The truth is amazing. Being truthful with yourself and being truthful about who you are and the things that you can do was my first starting point. It was hard because it took courage to be truthful about myself. I was so interested in creating images for other people mm -hmm. and not allowing people to see my true feelings or how I truly felt about things. And also not having the ability to represent myself in a truthful way. So it took a lot of effort on my part to learn how to just to be truthful with myself. And then once I was able to do that, and I got very, very comfortable with that, now I speak that way um, probably like 99.9% .9 of the time. And uh, sharing with people my insight about what happened in my life, I'm talking about how I used to be. And so now how I am is a result of the changes that I was able to create inside of my life once I was able to see the truth about who I was. And for me, it's been so inspirational because it just validates that there's just so much more mm -hmm. than this physical world. And I think for all of us, the first mm -hmm. thing that we thought when we lost our child was, are they okay? Where are they? Are they scared? Are they this? Are they... And so to know that there is this beautiful, loving environment, and all they know is love and they want to help us, just was a layer that was gone for me, you know, with, with my son. And I know he's great. And then I look at how Rich reshaped his life and... Can I find some greater peace in this, living that way? That's what I'm trying to do. People, um, I can share this, I would like to share this with you, is that it's definitely an effort. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, you know, like I said, I was a, uh, I was a uh, undercover narcotic detective and 
Nobody showed me how to be an undercover narcotic detective. I used to go out on my own and without any wires and go into bars and make drug buys and all by myself and come back and that's what I don't do that anymore, right? Okay. <laughs> and the whole thing with and the whole thing with being the martial martial arts instructor, um, um, just getting to the point where I was and all the trials and tribulations you had to achieve. It was it was it took so much more courage and a self-effort to change me, to reshape my life. But it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Not only to my own life, but the people that I'm connected to, such as Christine and Jen and you wonderful people and Michelle and Courtney. It's listening to the words that now is shared with me that I'm able to share with other people because I never take possession of the words. It's words that were shared with me. And as I said, I was telling you, I was very, very grateful for anything that gets shared with me. And when I share it with other people, Everybody has their own ability to make a self-effort in their own life and to grow themselves. Everybody's capable of it. And seeing the difference that how your new way of living life, um, seeing, right, seeing the difference from your old way of living life, seeing the proof is a validation that we really do have a spirit. And my story that I shared with you today is part of that validation. Everything I told you was true, and I'm not quite sure what's going to happen three years from now or four years from now from now or five years from now, but I'm hoping that I can still come back here and speak about even maybe greater achievements that have happened in my life and encourage people to make the same thing that happened in your life. It's a beautiful world out there, much better than what anybody's ever showed me or taught me when I was growing up. So seeing the proof of it, I hope gives everybody hope that everybody can do the same exact thing, that it's really much more beautiful than we were ever taught. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. That's awesome. Yeah, what was that? Not let me pull it.